Book it on down the information highway on the Ed Schultz Radio Show, 1-877-934-6833. Our friend Robert Greenwald, Brave New Films. Mr. Greenwald, always a pleasure. Good to have you on. Thank you, Ed. Did an interview last night with Scott Olson, Iraq War veteran who was struck in the head and critically injured by a police projectile during that Occupy Oakland protest. It was his first live television interview since the footage of his injury caused an, uh, an really an international outcry. Incidents like this have a history of really igniting the passion of people. Uh, when they see him talk, when they hear him slowly gain his speech back, what, what, what does this mean to the movement, in your opinion? Well, first of all, Ed, I want to congratulate you for having him on. It was really a, one of the most powerful moments of television, and I think you know you and your team really should be congratulated. We all owe you a debt for, for it. I know my Twitter feed exploded when you had him on with people who were impressed and moved and really saluting his heroism. Here was a veteran doing what he said so eloquently, upholding and defending the Constitution against enemies, foreign and domestic. Boy, it's hard to beat that. Upholding the Constitution against domestic enemies, doing it nonviolently in pursuit of equality. And the result was, uh, you know, an example, yet another example of the militarization of our police departments around the country. Well, and we've seen the response. We've seen people come forward and support him and the students at UC Davis. And the overriding importance of all of this continues to be that there's an ongoing daily conversation now about economic inequality, about where we're spending our money, about what the 1% are doing to us. Um, and that's an amazing achievement. Well, you know, when I was listening to him last night doing that interview, I, I was thinking – what does law enforcement think about this? Mm. What did this kid do to deserve what happened to him? And and all of this is, this heavy-handed stuff is not to disrespect the police, but they're taking orders. It's so terribly unnecessary. It, the, it, the, the, these folks aren't there to be violent. No, it, it, it's exactly right, Ed. I mean, these are people who over and over again are wonderful examples of nonviolence and, you know, I was just reading an article. The police departments and the cities, the cities, they're broke. There's no money for school teachers. There's no money for anything. Cities have spent, as of November 15th, rough estimate, $13 million on evicting and arresting Occupy people. Now, well, now, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I, I got a call on this earlier today on the program. Somebody asked me, Ed, who's given these folks the orders to move these folks out, these protesters in all these cities across the country. And, and I, I said the money. Yeah. You, you know, the, these cities are financially strapped. Uh, it's an expense to them, and, and they want to move it out and end it. Now, well, your thoughts on that? Well, I think that's exactly right. It's the 1%, Ed. You know, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but it is the 1%. Because if we go in and ask for, uh, you know, in Atlanta, they spent $500,000 evicting the homeless, and this guy who runs the shelter said, I could run my shelter for two years. Why was the money not being given <clears throat> to the shelter and sensible social policy? <clears throat> Why was it being spent on people who are peaceful, who are not a threat, but it is, it's a, it, who are not a physical threat, but they're an idea threat, and they're a threat to the notion that uh, how this country is run the money in politics, and what the priorities are. Can you think of a better way for us to look at our priorities than to see what's done to heroic people like Scott Olson versus the bankers, Wall Street, the war profiteers? It's an amazing moment. Um, does it take something like this happening to a veteran to, I guess you could say, re-jumpstart a movement and keep it on the national scene? What do you think? Well, I think that I think the answer is yes, that what happened to him, what happened to the students, what we see over and over again, police departments in city after city, some with decent mayors, but they are responding in an irresponsible fashion, taking our money, our tax dollars, and again, you can't evict an idea. You can't stop an idea from spreading. So they may be able to close down some tents here and there, but damn it, it's not going to stop what's essentially this incredible outburst from people who are hurting, who are in pain, whose ex 
economic future is in in great uh, doubt and who are in despair, Ed. And that's what we're seeing. And the Scott Olsons, the heroes of the world, we need to celebrate them, but we also need to continue to find ways. How do we keep spreading these ideas? Brave New Films uh, producer and owner Robert Greenwald here on the Ed Schultz Radio Show. You can follow Robert on Twitter, at Robert Greenwald. Voting is still open open, uh, at who are the one percent dot com? What's what's the update on that? <laughs> well, as we say, the voting is for you know who in the one percent are spending their money and power to hold the other ninety nine percent down. No surprise, Rupert Murdoch number one, the Koch brothers number two. But we've got some good candidates. Paul Singer, this hedge fund manager, uh, is up there. Lloyd Blankenfein from Goldman Sachs is up there. Eric Prince from Goldwater. So. We encourage people to go to who are the one percent to vote, and most importantly, to spread it around because it's another way to use this moment, Ed, in time, so people understand really connecting the dots. How does the system work, and that it's not an accident that so many people are hurting today. Who are the one percent? dot com. That would be the number one. Who are the one percent? dot com. Rupert Murdoch, number one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no surprise there at all. You know, uh, one percenters across America, you know, I, I've, we, we've seen a pattern here on the Ed Show. I'm going to talk about the recall in Wisconsin for a moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's how these folks work. Every time we do something on Walker, he shows up on some network the next day, normally Fox. Uh, but, of course, uh, he's just recently on CNBC after we did a big shot on Wisconsin and the recall and threw the number out there of 300000 And he was talking about how much money it's going to cost to recall. And I guess he is going all over the country trying to raise money. His campaign's already started before the Democrats have even got enough signatures, before the people have got enough signatures, before they even have a candidate to run against him. <laughs> uh, and they're they're talking... Seventy million dollars to mm. save his job, mm. and he he's out there talking about well the state is, is spending so much on this. But let me give you give me a, a, an example in Burlington, uh, a, a Racine County city, in Racine County in Burlington, Wisconsin, that voted for Nixon, Reagan, George H. W. Bush, and W. along with John McCain has a booming recall movement, indeed, no question about it, while Barack Obama received 2,424 votes in a small town of Burlington in 2008 compared to McCain's 2,567. Local recall activists have already collected 2,500 signatures in the first two weeks. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that, that's... <laughs> that's the, the, this, astounding. <laughs> and th- this is what's happening in, in you know, it, it's it's social media... It's the advocacy work of people such as yourself, the grassroots that are out there, and I, I, I just don't think that Walker's going to be able to combat this with TV commercials. What do you think? No, I, I definitely don't think TV commercials will be enough. They'll, they, you know, when you've got the Koch brothers financing you, $70 million is a drop in the bucket. But, you know, we talk about this all the time, Ed, and this is the wonder of social media, and I'm so glad you guys are so active on it, on, uh, you know, we've got Ed and Ed TV is that you trust social media because it's coming from friends, it's coming from relatives, it's coming from colleagues, and that's much more important than some TV commercial where people shut it off or they have it on TiVo or they fast forward through it. So we've committed at Brave New Films and Foundation to social media the last two years, and we're seeing an incredible increase in impact. It's no longer the old-fashioned way, how many eyeballs or ears do you have? The real measurement is how are you impacting, and that's social media, hands down, no question. Great to have you with us, Robert. Always a pleasure. Thanks so much. 